whether it's the water we drink or the air or, uh, in my case, the coffee I drink, in this case, uh, science and uh, oftentimes chemistry is all around us. Um, I've got my coffee maker here, and uh, I use what's called a Clever Dripper. And what's clever about the Clever Dripper is that uh, the coffee and the water are steeping until I put them on the cup, and then it starts to pour through into my coffee mug. So I can control the contact time between my coffee grounds and the water that I'm using to make the coffee. That affects the concentration, which we often refer to as strength, of the coffee. The longer I allow the coffee grounds and the water to mix, the higher the concentration or the higher the strength of the coffee. Although I think the proper term is concentration, not strength. Strength is a term we use for strong, weak, and non-electrolytes, not for the concentration or the amount of coffee dissolved in the water. Well, uh, I'll let my coffee continue to filter through my paper filter while we start to talk about very small concentrations. And for very small concentrations, uh, you need something called parts per million and parts per billion. And uh, let's see. Um, and in fact, there is a prescribed concentration in parts per million for how to make the perfect coffee, um, and um, which is interesting. There's also water quality reports from your local city or town or county if you're on a sewer system or on a uh, water system that tells you what are the parts per million, parts per billion of the different metals, say, in your water. Well, for very small concentrations, uh, the concentrations are based on the density of water, assuming that it's very close to 100% water or pure water. Uh, so for the density of water, which I'll refer to as D sub H2O, density of water is 1.00 grams per milliliter. And that's a very useful thing to memorize if you haven't already. Um, and uh, what it means too is that for water, the grams in the milliliters are equivalent. So 1.00 grams is equal to 1.00 milliliters. And it is true that the density of water is a function of temperature, uh, but it's very close to this at room temperature. And this is a good assumption to make. And we'll make this in uh, later lecture outlines for um, problems that we solve. Okay, so what that means is that a definition of one part per million of solute is going to be in terms of uh, sometimes grams or milliliters, but I'm going to write it in terms of grams, knowing that they're equivalent. So uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 6th grams of solute per 1 gram of H2O. And uh, uh, it's better to say that this is grams of solution, but um, because there is a solute and water is the solvent, but oftentimes we just say grams of H2O or grams of water because it's essentially pure water if you're dealing with very small concentrations. People like drinking water, say. Um, and uh, what this means is that, uh, or another way of saying this, if you take the grams and convert them into uh, milligrams, you actually get one milligram of solute. So that moved it one times 10 to the minus three. Uh, so it moved to decimal place three places. And if you convert the denominator to uh, 1,000 grams, which would be equal to 1,000 milliliters, you'll oftentimes see parts per million designated as milligrams of solute per liter of water. Okay. And uh, we'll define it here, and then we'll talk about how to use it next. One part per billion, one PPB solute, is going to be 1 times 10 to the minus 9 grams of solute per uh, 1 gram water. 
And I'm just going to go back and write water here instead of H2O. That is more typically how you see it. Uh, okay, good. Um, and we'll leave the parts per billion like this. Now, um, for these problems, these problems are actually uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, and I'm going to call these both companion problems. And then I'm going to work the harder problems. And we'll see that the companion problems here, they're easier. And we'll be able to come back to them. Or you'll be able to come back to them, hopefully, pretty straightforward. All right. So now let's go to a more complex example says the, uh, that actually deals with drinking water. It says the action level concentration for lead in drinking water is 15 parts per billion. The recommended amount of fluid consumption per day is 2.0 liters. How many atoms of lead are in 2.0 liters of water with a concentration of 15 parts per billion lead? Okay, so let's start with 15 parts per billion. And let's come back to this statement where we have two things that are equal to each other. Well, anytime there are two things equal to each other, then we can set up a unit conversion factor. Our unit conversion factor is going to be one of those things on the bottom. And since, <coughs> excuse me, parts per billion are on the top, and now it is time for me to consume my coffee solution. Since parts per billion is on the top, I'm gonna to put one part per billion uh, on the bottom. I'm also gonna note that this is parts per billion PB, lots of P's and B's today. Uh, and on the top, I'm now going to put this compound fraction, and I'll put it in green. Uh, so uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 9 grams of PB per uh, 1 gram of water. And so this is kind of an interesting way to do it. But uh, now there's a complex set of units on the top. We'll still get our units to cancel on the bottom. So, uh, and now we multiply the numbers on the top. So 15 and one gram is in the denominator still. So we're gonna multiply across the two numbers on the top. 15 times uh, one exponent nine minus. That didn't work. 15 times 1 exponent 9 minus. There we go. 1.5 times 10 to the minus 8. Uh, grams of PB per 1 gram of water. Okay. So now this is still a unit conversion factor. Um, and we are now going to say that we have, we're looking for atoms of lead and we have 2.0 liters of water. Which we now need to convert into uh, from liters of water to grams of water. Well, we can, some of these steps you can do in your head. I'm gonna write them all out. So one liter of water is a thousand milliliters. And one milliliter of water is one gram of water. And this is a definition. It does have infinite sig figs. We're going to be limited to our 2.0 liters to two sig figs for this problem, but you can always give me three. Um, although typically we do write 1.00 grams of water per milliliter. Okay, good. All right, so now we have grams of water. Now we can do 1.5 times 10 to the minus 8 grams of PB per one gram of water. Good. Now our units cancel out. We can multiply the numbers across the top. All the numbers on the bottom are ones. So two times 1,000 times 1.5 exponent eight minus, hit the minus button there. Good. And I get 3.0 times 10 to the minus fifth grams of lead in the uh, recommended or uh, amount of fluid consumption per day. Let's see, we have grams. 
we've been asked for atoms. So now let's do that next step. 3.0 times 10 to the minus 5 grams of lead. I have my periodic table right here. Lead, 207.2 grams per mole. Looks like there's a, there we go. And in one mole, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of lead. Now multiplying all this out, and I'll give myself a little more room there. Three exponent five minus. Sorry, I don't. Let's start over again. Three exponent five minus. You can hit the plus or minus before or after you hit the exponent part. Uh, divided by two o seven point two times 6.022 exponent 23rd. And I get equal to 8.72 times 10 to the 16 atoms of PB, which is a large number of atoms uh, uh, in one sense, but it's a relatively small number of moles in another sense. And that is at the maximum level of lead atoms that can be in drinking water um, according to the EPA. Interesting, and these are, you know, which to me is a very interesting thing to know. All right, so uh, let's work this problem as well. It says the maximum concentration, or there it is, maximum concentration of polychlorinated biphenyls, PCBs, in drinking water that is allowed by the EPA is 0 0.5 parts per billion express this as a weight percent. So weight percent, also called a mass percent, also called percent composition. Percent mass by mass, percent weight by weight, what have you. Okay, so uh, we know that percent by uh, mass by mass is gonna equal mass of, in this case, PCB, divided by mass of solution, or water in this case, drinking water, times 100%. So we need to get all the numbers to fill this out. We know that we have 0 0.5 parts per billion PCB. And we don't even have to know what PCBs are, polychlorinated biphenyls. Um, my recollection is they're one of the side products uh, used or also in the manufacture of the coating around wires to keep them non-flammable. Don't hold me to that, but uh, that's my recollection anyway. But we can plug them into the formula and uh, let's see. Parts per billion PCB, oh, I'm gonna do this as a unit conversion factor. One part per billion PCB equals one times 10 to the minus nine grams of PCB per one gram of water. Like so. Uh, and the math is not too bad this time. It's just gonna be 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus nine or 5.0 times 10 to the minus 10 grams of PCB per one gram of water. Okay, and this is actually very close to what we need. Yeah, I didn't even have to use my calculator there. I did the math in my head. Uh, because we need mass of PCB over mass of water, and we just need to multiply this times one uh, times 100%. Right, so this basically became a percent by mass formula when I multiply that out and I'm left with 5.0 
times 10 to the minus 8 percent mass by mass PCB. And so that's why they use um, parts per million, parts per billion, is uh, even though they're very, they're very small numbers when expressed in moles or percents, uh, in parts per billion, it's a number 0.5, or in the previous example, 15. They're relatively small numbers that we can get used to dealing with.